And now, The Bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Yeah, I must want to tell you to start the song over, Lou, because I didn't I didn't feel we got the vibe in the room of it today. We were all so chatty, a bunch of chatty Cathy's we were today, everyone. It's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM ninety five, Dan Soderoff gallivanting with God knows who, the likes of Paul Giamatti's or whoever he's gonna end up accusing of molesting him one day. Uh sitting in his place with me. Uh, you know him from High Society Radio on the Gas Digital Network. Lewis is going to be so happy I said that. And the producer of the legendary Bennington Show, my good friend Chris Stanley is here. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We got to it. Um, thank you for being here, buddy. I'm excited to have you in. I There's always some sort of an event going on here. Always. At Sirius XM this time of night in that fishbowl. And we always have to look into who it is. Because I'm never familiar with who the person is in that room. Or if we are, we're always wrong about who it is. Or no matter what, they never have any interest in talking to us. <laughs> that is for goddamn sure. Well, at night here at Sirius, if it's if there's an event going on at night, it's like one of three things. It's either hip hop, sure. It's either something from the one of the Hispanic stations, or it's like an EDM guy doing like a show. Have you ever been here for one of the EDM shows? They well, actually do it. Yeah, they actually do an EDM show, and there's like fifty to a hundred kids, just like kids, like kids in their, in their younger, like in their twenties, dressed up like they're going to the club, mm-hmm. but they're in our lobby. Not drinking, not partying, just listening to on a Tiesto or whatever. They sit there. They sit there. Some sit there, and some are just like milling around in our lobby, and they're packing the fishbowl just to hang out and just listen to a set or whatever. I mean, like, to, so, it's weird to hear a song that's. I assume EDM at this point is made solely for the use of drugs. I think so. I don't yeah. think anyone's kind of like, no, listen to the intricacies and the strings. No, I want to roll. I want to roll face. I want to <laughs> eat a lot of Molly. Like I really want to get messed up. I don't want to be happy for two weeks after this. <laughs> like I just want to just just snort and eat Molly. Is that what it is? Does it take you down like that? Oh yeah, like it, like ecstasy or Molly. Like yeah, it's it's a, it's a hard come down. But at, in New York, they found out all the Molly like a couple of years ago. Ninety percent of the Molly was just bath salts that they seized. So everyone's really? Just, really just eating bath salts again, weird. So thank God no one like ate each other. That oh, was the no. big bath salts thing. Yeah, that was like five or six years ago. I've, uh, I'm not familiar with Molly or ecstasy very much, and I really like, like I come, I heard that with mushrooms before too. I've never felt there to be, I've only done it a handful of times ever, but I also never felt there to be a big come down from it. I've done so many mushrooms <laughs> and have had so many bad come downs. It's terrible. I'm just like evaluating my life. And like I've been alone on the subway. Like I'll eat. My, I was growing up in the city in Manhattan or whatever in Brooklyn. I would eat the mushrooms at someone's house and then get kicked out of the house because it's like you know it's an eight hour trip and then be on the subway coming down on the subway by myself at five in the morning just feeling terrible. But it's a terrible. It's it's actual chemical. The terrible feeling, right? It's like you've you've drained your body. Am, I, am, I getting, like, am I getting the science on that wrong? Yeah. It's like you, you drain your body of like serotonin, right? I don't think that's with mushrooms. Mushrooms are just a hallucinogen. I don't think it's sucking serotonin oh, in right, your head right. like ecstasy would. But uh, the, it's just I'm just evaluating my life. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm in the subway at five in the morning. I've been tripping all night long. What's going on? Why is my life turning out this way? You're like, tomorrow I'm gonna finish that resume. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm gonna start packing my own lunch. Everything's gonna turn around for me. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna go great from now on. And then I wake up like, oh, I was just coming down off a trip. I'm not. Nothing's gonna. Change. I want to eat mushrooms next week. <laughs> I'm going to become gluten free. I'm going to really turn everything around this year. I'm going to, I'm going to join CrossFit. I mean, I'm going to get swole. I've never had. Uh, I've never had. Uh, luckily, I haven't gotten too introspective on mushrooms. The only times I've done it, it's always been there's a concert. I'm yeah. hanging out with buddies the yeah. whole ride, or it just never really hit me. Yeah, at well, all. That, that, so. Consider yourself lucky. Yeah, yeah. Because I've eaten enough to have enough bad trips. It's awful. Yeah, and, a bad, and you can't get out of it. Uh, no, it's pretty hard to. You have to, like, you just there eat. Could you, could you get your mind off of it? Um, I mean, in my experience, it's always been, I'm going to ride this out. I'm going to try not to kill myself. <laughs> and I'm just going to, I'm then, all right, so I was at, on acid, too. I've had terrible come down. Never tried acid. All right, so I was at a fish festival. This was around 2003. Are you a fan? I'm a fan of fish, yes. Okay. And so I bought some a uh, bunch of uh, acid off a of dude, and then I eat all the acid, and then like everyone else is my campsite because we're at a, we're in, we're in uh, I think Vermont or Maine at a uh, air force Bannon Air Force Base, so it's like sixty thousand people at this show, and I'm walking around the Air Force Base at like you know three in the morning, 
and I'm just talking to myself, all right, this is what year it is. This is the president. Like, I thought I was going to never stop <laughs> tripping. And then, on top of the Air Force control tower, Fish starts performing on top of the fucking tower. And I look to my right, because you can see it from everywhere. I'm like, what the fuck? Am I, is this fucking really happening? Like, it was... A, was it really happening? It was really happening, yes. <laughs> yes, they, they did, like, a, a two-hour, like, ambient scent of just of, of just weirdness. Weird. No no lyrics, just a just weird playing music set. Yeah. For two hours. For two hours. And I'm just up there. I'm just, like, staring at it. Like, I, was, I guess I'll walk towards the Tower of Music. There's got there's got to be a meeting in the back, right? Like, let's go out there and freak everyone out. Like, there's yeah. got to be. It's like, we know we'll just trip them out, and we'll never... <laughs> they do a whole set where they mouth the words of the songs, but they never actually say them. And this I was like, is great! Everyone's like, have I gone deaf to lyrics? Can I only not hear lyrics? <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, and I heard the come down from that is brutal. It could be, yeah. But I've, I've had more positive experiences probably on acid than mushrooms. For a come down. For a come down. And ecstasy, just the next day, you're just shot. Like, you're just, you're really depressed. And, but you, but you, even if you could tell yourself, like, well, here's why. Nope. You're still depressed. No matter you still what. Feel awful. You're like, I feel depressed because I'm coming off ecstasy, but still, also, my <laughs> life sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> Stupid. Have you had that, Christine? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Bad come down. Yeah, well it it just depletes all your dopamine and your serotonin so it's like your body just doesn't have those happy chemicals the next day. It's awful. I had a friend that tried to kill herself after doing ecstasy. We had, like I had a friend tell me that if I did ecstasy again like she we ha- I'd have to move out cuz I was so terrible the next it was like 3 days actually before I felt normal again. Jacob, you never did a drug like this at all, right? No, never. You never tried ecstasy me. before? No. Tomorrow night, buddy. It's yeah. happening first you time. Roll. You're gonna fucking I don't think roll I have face. a lot of serotonin to deplete, so that scares me. <laughs> oh no, it comes that you feel all consumed oh, by love. Yeah, supposedly you'll get it. Yeah. No, I'm worried about the next day. Don't. Uh, it's only gonna be tomorrow night. That's all you gotta worry about. Oh, so what, dude? You look at those four walls of your apartment like a prison, <laughs> and you realize the real prison's in your mind, and you'll never get out. <laughs> And that's when you start getting the disenfranchised to start following you and mm-hmm. fulfill your destiny as young Charles Manson, my friend. Jacob's young Charles Manson. I don't know if you watched all those documentaries recently, but we found out that Jacob is young Charles Manson. So. I mean, striking similarity. Really? Striking. We have an example. Christine will pull it up. We have an example of it somewhere. Um, it's sad Manson died, huh? People, have, people start calling in with their bad shroom trips. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to end up being boring stories, though. It's like, I thought this tree was trying to teach me algebra, so I chopped it down. <laughs> like, oh, Turns what? out it was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> the chili's made of people. <laughs> I, uh... Yeah, look, I'm lucky, I guess. And, and acid, I'm just like, any drug you tell me it can go bad... Like, look, of course it can go bad, but it doesn't yeah. matter, man. You listen to some music, you hang out with friends. I'm like, no, 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 no. If you've already... Saying the words to me, it can go bad, makes me believe it will go bad. Now you think, I'll like, be the guy who's going to go bad for it. Yeah, now there's no chance. There's no getting out of it. Yeah, no, I don't have that personal positivity. But look, I think you should take ecstasy because it's going to be great in the moment. I mean, you're going to feel shitty the next day. Right. But there's no chance of it, like, you feeling bad during the actual trip. You say it can't go bad. It can't go bad. It's an impossibility because of the chemicals. Yeah, for the chemicals. I almost thought D'd on it once, but that's the that's because I ate too much. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't eat too much. How much did you take? Do you even know? Did they measure it out for you? I see. I was, I was at. Uh, I was going to a fish show. It really... <laughs> seems to be a theme. Another, another store here, and um, I uh, just drank, I didn't drink any water all day long. And so I just bought some Molly off some hippie girl, and she said, "Just eat one, because this is fire." That's what, those were her words. I'm like, what are you talking about, lady? So eat was one. Was she wearing like a blinky something? Uh, something she was on her shallow. <laughs> Most of her clothes are made of hemp and patchwork pants. So so I eat the I eat the uh, the Molly, and then I go to the show, and at set break, I find my buddy. And he's, he's selling e pills. So then I eat half, and then snort the other half in the bathroom. <laughs> oh God! And then and then I keep drinking and keep having. You know. Do you remember the songs we were playing while this oh, was happening? God, no. <laughs> Can anyone find this set from 2004 at Nassau Coliseum? I'm sure. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that actually sure. is out there. And then I, uh, and then afterwards we go to some other place in Long Island, and then I eat the, uh, the rest of the ecstasy that I bought, and then at one point I'm just feeling my pulse, and it's like 160 a minute, and I'm like, this is bad, this could go, and I start, and I start vomiting, because I only just been drinking alcohol and probably thank weed. God, yeah, exactly, yes, and then, um, but then eventually 
I was able to just pound, I pounded a couple of gallons of water and everything turned out okay. <laughs> that was your almost OD. That was my almost ODing on ecstasy. Is that almost ODing if you if you cure it with water? <laughs> I think so. I, think I, I just boiled it down to I'm dehydrated. He's like, oh, I watered it and that made it, I, I I pleased the ecstasy gods. They were just thirsty. Um. Yeah, fish really seems like it was a rough go for you. Well, was, those are my ecstasy years. That's when I was eating a lot of ecstasy. Do you How think it did permanent damage? No. No? Not no, at all? I don't think so. Uh, it's funny. Me and... That's one of my favorite stories. Uh, when I was on the uh, Mayhem Fest tour, there was a guy on the bus with me. And this guy was like, I mean, a spacey dude. He was just one of the workers. I was on the bus with the production. So yeah. this guy just built stages and shit. You're back at steerage. Y- yeah. these guy, And these guys were like, they're great. They were great dudes, all yeah. of them. I mean, they were just, you know, these are guys who just their whole life, they have no ties. It's the road. Yeah, there's no ties. <laughs> They're those kind of guys. And this guy was telling me the things he used to do to get high at one point, and this guy was very spacey already. He goes, oh, yeah, man. He's like, when I was younger, I used to, in my high school, I drank a lot of coughs here. Oh, get fucked no. up. So I think we were talking about Sizzurp. <laughs> you know how, uh, how Little Wayne and them make, like, basically codeine yeah, cough methods. syrup? And, and rappers still love it. That's like, and like young kids. That's this, this, these are drugs young kids like. I know this from Instagram by following young girls. It puts holes in your brain, right? Is that what it does? No, it doesn't. It doesn't no, I don't think it puts holes. Meth puts holes in your brain. Oh, okay, but they drink promethazine and eat uh, Xanax. That's the thing. Just getting lit as fuck off Xanax and promethazine. I always looked at Xanax as like the I'm going on a six hour flight. I want to sleep. That's all I've ever looked at Xanax. I've never took it like, as a Social drug in any way. I used to eat it all the time. Like, I used to eat, like, Xanax. What's the point of it? it? What does it do? I don't know. Like, when I would, when I was, like, reading a lot of Xanax, like, I would just do that and drink. And yeah. then, like, when, when you're just so messed up on Xanax, like, beer tastes like soda. And right. you're just pounding booze. <laughs> and you're just messed up. And you black out. You do bad things. <laughs> on Xanax. Yeah, on Xanax. Yeah, I know people have gone to rehab for Xanax. I yeah, don't, I don't, it's terrible. I don't get and it. The, and the, the withdrawal is really bad. Like, if you're taking Xanax every day, you're going to wean yourself off that. Yeah, no, if you're taking it every day. But it's anti-anxiety, isn't it? Yeah, it's anti-anxiety. And I just doubt if I'll have a Xanax, it's just to go to sleep. But how does it fuck you up if it's anti-anxiety? Do you have to like, stay, like, do you have to stay, is, I know there's a lot of drugs out there, you have to take them, and then the trick is always like, no, but stay awake. That's yeah, ambient, like, and that shit's real weird. Even like NyQuil. Yeah. Like, stay awake on NyQuil, then you're partying. <laughs> like, you just what? take enough of it. Like, we used to take a bunch of, we used to take multiple Ativans because it would kind of like make you yeah. feel tweaky. It's the same yeah, type me. of anti-anxiety. Yeah. yeah. Jittery does not sound like the high I'm ever looking for. Why not? It's great. It's like, you get like, jittery? You know what I mean? Goes, I would just think I'm having a heart attack the whole time. Is anyone else's hands tingling? <laughs> yeah, that's what it means it's working. I've gotten that with weed in my life. But that's a, that's my I've smoked too much weed in my life. Is uh, numb, uh, hands, feet. All right, that's that like that, like tingly. Yeah, and it's always my right side because that's what I think the stroke is coming to. Okay, the stroke right side. I thought it was was heart stroke right, heart attacks left. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought they were both left. So don't worry when your anxiety kicks in. Now you'll start getting the stroke tingles. <laughs> That's what happens to me. I get numbness in my face when I if I smoke. If I, it's always too much. What all it does when it attacks my anxiety, it's like my anxiety rolodex of things to be anxious about. Yeah, that are I guess in my control or that I can worry about on myself is three things. It's like dying from a heart attack, dying from a stroke, or whatever, just being broken, like you know, penniless. <laughs> Those are the three things. So. I can't prove I'm going to be penniless and broke right in the moment. Yeah. So everything else is the manifestation. It's all the physical stuff. So that's, that's how I know. Attacks. So anything that made me wired and jittery would make me feel like I'm like, oh, it's really happening now. Oh, the old heart's getting ready to take <laughs> off. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> it's about to pop. You never, Black Lou, you, you do dances with drugs at all? I'm, I'm saving, uh, DJ Lou for last because DJ Lou and Chris Stanley, I feel like, Probably knew and funny that you knew each other or something. <laughs> like, remember we fought those bikers in the parking lot of Pearl Jam '98. No, but I'm sure we did. <laughs> Black Lou, I only smoke weed, brother. That's it. That's it, man. You still smoke weed every day. But every day, yep. hell yeah. You said that so Nate Dog like. <laughs> smoke weed every day. Rest in peace. Go ahead, White Lou. Let us have it. Smoke Let us know. Weed every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I told you my past. I used to do a lot of uh, everything. And you have the come down too problem? Yeah, but back then ecstasy was uh, different than it is now. <laughs> I feel like every do you do you smoke cigarettes in your place? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and so do you, Lou. Yeah. I, wow. 
Me and Christine, were, me, me and Christine were talking about this on the, on the on the on the subway right here. I'm like, people who smoke cigarettes. It's always like they'll have a lot of other similarities in their life. I believe it to be true. <laughs> Types of music they like, r- relationship issues, very possibly. Yeah, we're very similar, me and Chris. <laughs> But your your Jack White is your Pearl Jam. Yes, Pearl Jam's your your diehard. I think my okay. his fish is is the uh, same as me and Pearl Jam, right? Fish? Yeah, I still love Jack White though too. That could be both. Are you still fish? I mean, I haven't gotten to a fish show in a long time. But I'm still, it still doesn't mean I don't like fish. Well, Mike Fenoy would tell you that you're not fish. Yeah, I know. I get it. I know. I've gotten shit from fucking fish fans. I was in a fish show once, and uh, some, I was, some guy was like, hey, man, how, how many shows have you been to? I'm like, 13. And he just like looked down on me. Like, scumbag piece of shit. You got nothing else better to do than go to fucking fish shows? You're like, it's the same fucking band, man. Well, 13's a good run. <laughs> Marilyn Manson's my favorite. I've probably seen him 15 times. And I, and, you know, and, he came, and I would see him like multiple times when he came to like, the area, yeah. I would, you know, I would drive an hour and a half, two hours to go see him. So other Manson fans don't look down on you. They don't because it's, there's never been a thing with Marilyn Manson. Like how many shows you've been to? Because also he would just take five year hiatuses from touring. Sure, ever, you know what I mean. Yeah. So. You know, no one's looking at that, but with fish, do they never stop ever? No, they stopped for a couple of years uh, in the early 2000s. They're they so back. rich. Oh yeah, they're loaded. They're so rich. Yeah. I love still keeping the hippy dippy vibe to be. Yeah. This, they just, but they're not. They don't themselves make themselves kind of like out there. Uh, I don't know. I, I know, like they've made a few documentaries. Yeah, but I mean, like they don't really give you. There's no like cribs, Trey Anastasia. Oh, oh yeah, no. Where you coming in? Here's where I keep this, this fridge just for Moet. <laughs> <laughs> Dom Perignon. <laughs> It's not how you say it. That's how they say it on cribs. <laughs> no one knew how to explain anything that was in their fridge. No. Oh, it's- this right here is a quinoa. Uh, Cali. <laughs> I don't know. Some white bitch I'm fucking said I'm supposed to be eating this shit. Save my feet. What happened to that show? Why is that still on? Because it was always fun. It was always good. It just made you upset. Really? You'd watch I always stuff. enjoyed it. No, it was, it was when you saw someone where you were like, really? They you have a good- also, the problem is I think... I bet the celebrities of today who who would do it, like the level of like, uh, you know, they'd have like a Missy Elliott or people like that would mm-hmm. do Cribs back yeah. in the day. The level of a Missy Elliott, like popularity in music right now, probably doesn't live in a fucking mansion. You I know what I mean? Like, I bet she still lives in a mansion. I, who, Missy Elliott? Yeah, I bet Missy Elliott. No, 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 she does. I'm saying the equivalent to now. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, Like when, when she was on Cribs, she was like a star that you were like, of course, we want to see where Missy Elliott lives. And they had these like... It always made that ten million. That was a big deal about MC Hammer. He had that ten million dollar mansion, yeah. and that was his big mistake buying this crazy mansion where he did the pumps and the bump video. <laughs> it's a great video. But I mean, like, and you're like, well, you don't understand why he had that. But then you see Missy Elliott would have a, a comparable house to that, and like, you know, seven cars outside, and all the cars had like, you know, the trunk opened until it was like a giant speaker that yelled at the the gods, <laughs> and. uh and everything, she's like, she's like, I wear new socks every day, and I throw out my white T-shirt every night. Why? And it was, yeah, they lived like that. But I don't know if today the music business doles out money like that. Whereas I bet I don't think Cardi B's got a fucking mansion. Not yet. She's probably lucky to afford to buy an apartment. She probably has a two bedroom up in the Bronx. I mean, that's probably what sure. she's doing. And it's nice, but she has like one of those. Uh, she has one of the lights in the corner with like the four lights that come out. <laughs> It's kind of like a dorm room for a, you know, for a place out of college. There's a lot of Ikea furniture. But she owns it. Yeah. <laughs> Why would I have a box spring when I got these wood slats? Good Says point, Cardi, Cardi B. Yeah, <laughs> great point, Cardi B. You're right. These people are just wasting money. But it's not even that. It's not even that they're just throwing the money away. I just think, like, what happened with Missy Elliott was, I think at the time, if your album, if you had, like, a million units of sales... On something, you of course you could buy a multi-million dollar house. Yeah. Now, if you get a million, um, if you get a million hits, it's I don't, I don't know what the some people seem to make a lot of money off it, but well, if you, you have one video with a million hits, it's not going to really change your life. I don't think it's not going to change your life for sure. No. And how do you keep cranking out hits and hope they hit on YouTube when when any dude in his house or woman can just make a, a comparable song? Yeah, but there's also like I don't know. There's plenty of like YouTube like uh, musicians. Oh, I know. Like that guy, Jake Paul. I think he's like a rapper, right? Like, you heard about that is guy? Jake Paul? Right? No, Jake Paul. Oh, oh, the white kid. The white kid. You like, you like, oh, buddy. Do we know him? All right. Oh, we're going deep. 
It's every day, bro. That's how they're living. Team 10 for life. That's Savage it. boys. I like the Fat English guy in that crew. That's been our favorite. I said, I said his debut album's coming out called Guys Wait Up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the fat kid in the denim jacket just hangs out with him, the poor asshole. There he is. He's, he's not even getting the spillover pussy because there's 82 guys in Team 10 who are better looking than him. God, he's creepy looking. Man. the worst people in the world. I thought the food in England is terrible. Is, it he, is he eating all the good stuff? He's constantly eating blood sausage. <laughs> just bags of blood sausage. Do you think his bang is in mash, mate? Again? Again? Their parents must not love them. Uh, These kids? Yeah. Or loved them a bunch. Mm. Cause, all right, Jake, I bet the girls were loved right into the hands of these guys. <laughs> uh, d didn't Jake Paul's like brother like get the? I think he got him started because his brother's also a fucking YouTube star or he was a Vine star. He was originally he was a Disney Channel. Oh show yeah, guy. Disney Channel. Too. Who was Jake, Jake Paul? Paul? Yeah, and he got yeah. fired from Disney. Why? Fucking Pussies. grabbing, grabbing Pussies. puss. Exactly. I think he was just constantly just grabbing young. Pussies. Oh yeah, we dug into these guys and the Savage Boys, fucking the Martinez twins. Oh, the Martinez. Can twins. we switch the language? And they're the guys that he he, he they were in Team Ten, and Jake Paul bullied them. He bullied them, and so they left. But he wants you to know they are not pussies. We're not pussies. They're yeah. not. Who's getting bullied by Jake Paul? Oh, these two. These, these, two <laughs> these two Twinkies right here. <laughs> Individually wrapped? No, no, no. That's a two-pack for you right there, buddy. Same amount of cream in both. I promise. It's every day. It's every day. Oh, then they yell at you in Spanish? Why is this crew so international? I didn't even know these dudes. There's the English guy? I'll tell you what, because 12-year-olds want to be them. What? And that's what it is. They want to be them. They all... Nobody... They did it. I used to make jokes. I had a joke on, I think, my first album where I said about my daughter being like, I go, why would a kid be something like a doctor or scientist now? Like, you see the ability that you can go and just make YouTube videos and become a star, and you'd hope that, that wouldn't get... you think the world would see that and be like, yeah, this is... Let's not make them stars. Yeah. But then they just do make them stars. Yeah. Isn't this guy... So to almost take it back, isn't this g -Eazy? He was, like, off the internet. Is he? He's an internet star, I think. I think he came from the internet, yeah. Let's, like, finally get back to g -Eazy. He's white, which I didn't know. I did know that. What? g mm -hmm. a white man. g is a white guy. <laughs> That's the new thing, too. These guys who look punk, like Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. They look like punk guys, but they're rappers. That's been going on for a long time. Like, Dipset or whatever started wearing, like, the uh, Misfits t-shirts and wallet chains. The black dudes? Yeah, the black yeah, yeah, like Jim Jones. If you look at a Jim Jones video, he's just like wearing dipset shit. Oh man, nothing, I, mean, I mean misfits fucking clothes. Nothing's more confusing than when uh, uh when black guys appropriate white culture. <laughs> oh, like when they start skateboarding. But it's like we've always known like the the quote unquote the Carlton. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like that appropriation of like quote unquote white culture, but the appropriation of like punk rock is pretty huh? funny. <laughs> oh, and black guys are gonna make it so much cooler looking. Oh, it's gonna stink. Yeah, Little Wayne was the first to do it. Yeah, he came out with the jeggings. Did he? Was he wearing jeggings? He came out on an award show wearing jeggings, and everyone was going He took about one day of shit for everyone saying that he was wearing tights, and then and the next day, everyone's wearing like these little pecker leg jeans. That's it. That hug your leg up to the dick pits. I had no idea about that. It's so weird. But yeah, punk rock culture. There they go. Well, I guess they look pretty good. So I don't. I don't yeah, know why? He's That's what I'm them. saying. He's rocking them though. <laughs> That's what's annoying everybody, that they pull it off. And he loves uh, Promethazine as well. I'm telling you, Promethazine is the, sh the shit. Have you tried it? I uh, I think <laughs> I think I tried it once. Wait, what's Promethazine? It's like um, it's prescription cough syrup. Oh. But it's like the real good shit. It's better than codeine. We're, uh, we're ju we jumped so far off that I forgot to tell you that the guy told me he used to drink a bunch of cough syrup uh, when he was younger on the Mayhem Fest tour. Yeah, yeah. And to close that story out, I go, oh, man, I go... That's uh, that's cool. He goes, do you feel any like residual effects from that? He's like, yeah, no, I think it fucked me up pretty good for life, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I guess. Sad. I mean, the way you see him talk, you're like, oh yeah, I think it did, dude. I think you're right. I think I didn't need to ask him that question. Maybe I... stay away from it. Um, what's G Easy music sound like? Is it as hateable as we're all thinking? I think it's gonna be great. Is there a video? I'd like to see this guy doing his thang you thing. You want to see him in action? I don't want to see his fucking Bruce Springsteen cover here. Wow, that is very Bruce. It's fucking lover boy where he's got the cross over his ass. <laughs> I can see where all of his, where everything's getting it from. Let's see. Are you just playing the music? Is there a video? Oh, here Sorry, we go. I'm waiting for an ad to clear. Palsy? Gotta get, gotta get that YouTube red. 
What was that where we get to defeat all the ads? Yeah, no ads. Yeah. What's that cost? I think like ten bucks a month, like everything else in the Jesus. world. Jesus, mm-hmm. that's a lot for YouTube. Yeah, it's fucked up. I'll watch a fucking ad. I expense it. <laughs> like I need this because I play videos on on uh, the show. That's true. Yeah, that's true though. You do. Yeah, Christine, why are we not expensing it? And you're. And we should be expensing YouTube right, hundred <laughs> percent. I expense my Netflix and my oh. Hulu. Oh, bitch! You just got fucking. By out- expense, you- do you mean somebody else pays for it? Because that's what I need. Yo, you just got outproduced by Chris Stanley, bitch. <laughs> oh, Chris Stanley can produce circles around me. Oh, no. oh, no. oh no. He's, but who's firing these? Shots? Oh, producer off. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go. Is this Halsey's voice? I think this is Halsey. Well, I hate this. Bar, right? The crazy kind. It's pretty good. Cool. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi. Well, Christine, that's it. Start making oh, music. Easy. Christine, we can totally do this. Yeah? Yeah. You make a video? Why can't we? We both suck. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't we? We both suck at music. Why can't we do this? <laughs> she sucks. <laughs> <laughs> We're on talent. Did it making music? Why why can't we do this? <laughs> they did it. Halsey and Jeezy did it. I don't look like Halsey. You gotta look like Halsey. Is it Jeezy or Jeezy? Jay, can I take a, can I take a vacation, get some surgeries? Yes. <laughs> Let's get you some fucking backroom Colombian surgeries. <laughs> <laughs> I want Brazilian butt lift, a tit job, and then I'll make a music video. Me? I'll just add a little more flair to my already very punk rock attire. <laughs> and are they together? Oh, no, she's got small boobs. Jeez, was that? Well, I'm glad we got that clean. <laughs> oh, look at that! A sister. Yeah, wh- where's Jeezy from? I'm just gonna call him Jeezy from now on. Jeezy, Jeezy and Halsey. Um, where is he from? Is he out there? This is video. Oh, is Jacob, wins. go get him. <laughs> Jacob, book Jeezy. Go get Jeezy. We're doing a listening party. They're in the middle of the. I know, that's what makes it funny if you go over there and try to get him. <laughs> try to usurp Sway and use the word usurp and see if it just confuses him till his hat falls off. <laughs> until I've never Jama- seen him without that hat. He has a Jamaican hat, but there's nothing Jamaican in it. There's no braids in it anymore. You, why do you have to wear the hat still? His video, he has a video that has 311 million views. What? Is Jeez. that all? Actually, yeah, and then this one has 28 million, which... Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Some guy has 300 million hear, years has never heard of him. Can we hear the 311 million one? Yeah. Three, three five, four, guys, three, we had two. Guys, we your bread. Oh, one. so great. Expense that shit. Yeah, I'll sign up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really don't get this at all. Uh, Black Lou, yeah. do you co-sign this? Oh, I know this song. Not necessarily, no. Now? Uh, it's not. It's not. It's just poppy rap. That's all. I don't think he's like... In reality, I don't think he's not talented. I just don't know if I get it. Where the black world and white world have met in this generation, I do not like it. <laughs> I like where it met. In the 90s, it met, it, round, it met around like Nas. In the 80s, it met right smack dab, very blatantly with Run DMZ and Aerosmith. Each one oh, respectively nice. brought their races over and was like, here, play with these guys. Everything's fine. And I was like, okay. And then Run DMC was like, we have some other friends, Public Enemy. And I was like, too militant. And then I backed off that and jumped into like the far side, shit like that. Oh yeah. But the tribe uh, called Quest. Who do you blame yeah. it on? Tribe called Quest. You blame it on Jay Z, Lincoln Park. Do you blame it on? No, Eminem. not Jay Z, Lincoln Park. And it's not Eminem either. Eminem has become this more now. But no, when he first came out, no, Eminem gave more of his whiteness up to yeah. meet in the middle. It's not mean. It's meeting too far to the white. Well, I don't want to see a fucking black guy dressed like James Dean, grabbing, <laughs> wearing tight fucking jeans and like skinny leather. Je- they look weird. I think after thirty, 30- Wiz Khalifa does not scare me at all. I would fight him and four other Khalifas at the same time. How about Chance the Rapper? Is he scary? No, he's so pleasant, and nice. He's a very nice man. And they're all built like fucking. Uh, that was the thing you couldn't tell who was scrawny and little back then because the clothes were enormous. Now you can see these guys. With, you can't lose a fight to a guy whose fucking ankles and, and thighs are the same width? <laughs> That's insanity. It's just become mainstream. Rap used to be an underground thing that, you know, was your parents didn't want you to listen to it. Now it's just pop music. So everybody does pop music. Hey, Martha Quinn over here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I'm too young for that reference. <laughs> Shit, she is. All right, I'm going to go get some references. Let's take our first break, oh. and we'll come right back. We're hanging out with Chris Stanley. It's the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. It's Jack White Day here. All right. Big J Okerson hanging out with Chris Stanley. It's the bonfire. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Everyone's settled in now, I think. Yeah. Did you, did you look into g Easy for us? Is he coming on? Is he coming on? 300 million hits. Is he excited? Does he know who I am? <laughs> Has he heard about me? I keep wanting to say he's from Philly, but that's not g Easy. I'm thinking of G-Love and Special Sauce. That's Philly, yeah. Are from Philly. Next but I don't know their Oakland. music either. What? Oakland. g Easy is? Mm -hmm. From Oakland? Mm -hmm. well, that's pretty gangster, though. I don't know. Yeah. He is. Does he look gangster, though? Like, he doesn't look gangster. Like, Marshawn Lynch is from Oakland. That's a gangster-looking man. Oh, my God. He's terrifying. <laughs> Marshawn Even when he Lynch dances, does. it's scary. He's the best person ever, Marshawn Lynch. Oh, yeah? I love him. Why? He just says crazy shit. Like, there was, when, the, when the Seahawks were, like, in the Super Bowl... I think their first, I can't remember if it was the first or second Super Bowl. He would just go out on media day, like, we're gonna short, we're gonna find you $50,000 if you don't go out there and start t answering questions. He would go out and just give away oh, yeah. answers to everything. Uh -huh. Cause he just hated, yeah. he just hated talking to the media. That's great. I do love, did you ever see his reaction to, uh, Red Panda, you know who Red Panda is? Oh, the, with the panda just like, ex, uh, surprised No, 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 Red Panda is a, a lady. Look this up, oh, Christine. That was way off. Marshawn Lynch. Red Panda. I don't know. Uh, this is. Red Panda is a uh, Asian lady who is up on a gigantic uh, unicycle. Okay. And she flips bowls. Hang on, don't play it yet. She flips bowls onto her head. Oh, that's impressive. It's very impressive, very difficult. But the video, for some reason, I guess someone thought or knew it would be funny <laughs> to just have Marshawn Lynch sit around and react, to, and he just gives you great. Over, uh, over dramatic black reactions this, to it. This sounds awesome. You can't believe it. Yeah, play this is gonna be great. Every time she has more bowls, he goes, oh hell no. <laughs> oh hell no! Don't get up on that high ass bike, girl. Let me see what you gonna do with that thing, baby. <laughs> oh, watch your head. I can do that. Very quickly, he's decided he, that he can do this. <laughs> but he's about to get his whole black world turned around. I mean, he's a NFL running back. Oh, yeah. She acting up. <laughs> we ain't got no cereal. <laughs> I think he's talking to Marshawn. Just keep talking, please. Just keep talking. Hell no, you out of pocket. <laughs> Get the out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the the so she did one ball flipped from her foot up to Why her head. Like that? You play too much. Now she's That's doing it. two balls. Up on her head. <laughs> it's like a cartoon. Every time he goes, now there ain't no, now there ain't no goddamn way you're gonna get three of them bowls. He goes, some bitch just fucking put me wrong. Goddamn it, three, three motherfucking bowls. Goddamn it. If I'm gonna tell you right now, if you do all three of them on that, I'm gonna take your bike and I'm running down the street with that mother. Why would he steal? I'm gonna steal your. <laughs> get the out of here. Good job. I'm stealing your unicycle. Give me that. Beat it, you old slope. Don't. <laughs> you just throw bowls? <laughs> four bowls. Look at this, bro. She's gonna get four of them. He's just so happy. Yeah. You never see him that kind of happy. Three. No, he's just fucking running. Oh. He's eating Skittles and fucking running at other men. <laughs> That's his life? Yeah. No bad bro. It sounds terrible. She's putting all the mother... Uh, blood. <laughs> he just never she breaks the way he talks. Just jump no. up off that mother couch and like. Yo, she about to get five them bitches. <laughs> <laughs> five bowls and send them. You is a mother. I wish he would have tackled her off the unicycle. That'd be perfect. <laughs> was he Alcer? He got uh, drafted by the Bills out of college, mm -hmm. and when he uh, there was like a NFL video about him like getting drafted, and he gets drafted to the Bills, and because it, it was uh, Buffalo Bills in New York, he thought he was in New York City. <laughs> so when he got off the plane, he was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" Like he thought he was going to be in Times Square. He just saw smokestacks. Yeah, factories. But he's like, "What? 
What is this? He's just the absolute best. He also produced a movie about his life that never got um, released. They shot it. There's like a trailer for it, I think, online somewhere, but the Marshawn Lynch story. And it's he produced it. I think he produced it. And, like he had like a crooked manager like with him also like doing it, and then like, the guy screwed him over, so the movie never came out. It just never went. Anywhere. It's just like a bad like worst in a lifetime <laughs> movie. The story of Marshawn Lynch's life. Here you go. It's called oh, Family shit. First. Man, family. That's what I'm here for, boy. Oh, man. You already know that. I know this guy with an AK. Now you know you got lucky today. Those two touchdowns was no luck, punk. <laughs> it's like shot shot 100% on Handycam. <laughs> Filmed entirely on iFlip. This is basically the room, too. You're right. A what? The zone. Was it like... Your body and your mind took a backseat while your body took over? But I worry all the time <laughs> about having enough money to keep these boys out of trouble and in the sports. You're going to get you one of them victories. Yard for yard. Were they, oh, they were able to get Funk Flex for this. <laughs> <laughs> we do this as a family, y'all. Damn. Wait, is that not Funk Flex? Now I'm racist. That did not read good. It's not going to read good to our black listeners. We're not all funk flex, Jay. Like, yeah, but you're all DJs, right? <laughs> you guys all like funk flex night, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys, like, he's your cousin at least, right? <laughs> you off the team. Hold on, coach. Sean Bell, y'all want probation. The two, you have idealism versus realism, and your third one, you have the James Baldwin book report on 11.5. So it's like that. So is this the uh, the unique story of a black kid who didn't really excel in school, but really excelled in sports, and then they got him through college and to the pros? Somehow his mom kept him out of trouble long enough to make it to college and the pros. Wow. So is the story about his mom? Because it looks like him just getting yelled at by Funk Flex a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I've seen bad trailers for movies where it doesn't really tell you what's going on. I mean, Dust Till Dawn's trailer had no vampires in it. Did it not? I don't. Th- I think it was sold as like the, the first. That was it was going to be like some like, like a heist movie. Basically. Yeah, yeah, because it was the first hour. Is yeah. all that. And uh, I mean, this is shot so poorly. It, I w- just wish it would come out. I want to watch it. He's going to produce it. I'm going to produce it with my own money. And by my own money, I mean twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> All right, first things first. got to build a school. <laughs> the whole budget was used to build a school. <laughs> if you decide to move out of the hood. Sound like a deal. I could do that. Oh, I'm having a hell of a season. So he plays himself eventually. Yeah, yeah as he grows older, he, uh, Marshall Lynch starts playing himself in the film. They put. They probably could have got Mars Chestnut. I'm just saying. It seems like he's always available. He's a great actor. I mean, that guy is one text away <laughs> from being in a Tyler Perry movie 24 seven. And I'll tell you, he's always actually he's more than a text away. It's always just those three dots that show up that you know Tyler Perry's texting you before he's in another feel good black guys in sweater movie. Uh, he's saying yes before the text even comes in. He's like, you say it, I'm on it, Tyler Ferry. He's like, I was going to see if I could just borrow your boat this weekend. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I guess. Well, I guess I'll make another, Medea. This is a hell of a trailer, by the way. It's long as shit. And take them down to the washing machine. Now, if you could share with us, what is it that made you decide to start your foundation? Hey, aren't you Marshawn Lynch? You got to tell me something. Is you a reporter? No. You sure? Yep. All right, what's up? What you got for me? You know how when you make a touchdown, they throw candy at you? And I want to get in the grill, too. Oh, yeah. Is that a thing? Oh yeah. He uh when he was in I know when he was in uh Seattle, he would eat Skittles every time he sc- he scored a touchdown. So people start throwing candy at him? Yeah. He's got it'd be, if he dies from diabetes, I mean that will be apropos. I mean <laughs> very <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I mean we'll all feel bad sort of. <laughs> I'll feel bad. I yeah. love Marshawn. Kill it with beast mode. <laughs> <laughs> Can you beast mode out of cancer or some sort of diabetes? <laughs> <laughs> Time to go beast mode. Do you think he made an entire movie around the idea? Do, I, do you think there's a sex scene in it? Yeah, there was a chick in lingerie at one point. I think yeah. you missed it. I of love course. it. There it's is like no reason ever to have... That's so funny. There's no reason to ever have a, a sex scene in the Marshawn Lynch story, but to, just to get it in there. Gotta show that that guy's got a lot of pussy. Yeah, he goes, also, in between classes, once in a while, I used to crush some fine-ass pussy. <laughs> Just so y'all know. And then I got drafted. Oh, on draft night, that was a big night. I crushed that full five pussies that night. Now, I know uh, as far as the filming goes, we could cheat it back to two pussies that night. But I want to let them know that 
Also, in between there, there was three more pussy. Uh, Marshawn, why are you uh, calling women just pussies? <laughs> <laughs> they are people, Marshawn. Oh, well, it's going to sound weird. If I say I had sex with three, four peoples that night, people won't think I'm a faggot. I can't have motherfuckers running around and think I'm a faggot. Good point, Marshawn. Pussies it is. <laughs> I think we get an 11 camera shoot for this thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want to get that shit from all angles. We have to revolutionize the NFL. <laughs> NFL shot entirely on handicam. <laughs> he was just using flip cams. This fucking thing's so old. <laughs> yeah. Was, All right, Marshawn, we have to go take the USB port out of this, and we have to go upload. <laughs> <laughs> we have to upload this into the server now. Um, yeah, good for Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Who's going to get mad at him? No one. He seems like a fine-ass brother. I know black women are on the hunt for a fine-ass brother now. Are they? I started telling you briefly before the show about uh, some of the things. I, want. I got two videos here that they made me so happy this morning. It's just, it's, you know, and Black Lou, be be put on notice, Black Lou. What is that? Uh, Black, oh, wait, Black Lou doesn't like black women. Yeah. This is probably why, right? Yeah. Is this about to be why? <laughs> we better find out why. Black chick ain't willing to work with you. Uh, <laughs> black chicks ain't taking no shit no more, and they want... Uh, the two videos. Go to the other one first, because uh, I don't think this is a Marshawn Lynch problem. Actually, right here. <laughs> All right, what is this? What am I watching? This now? is um. Uh, well, the, the the headline simply: oh. chick doesn't like guys with small penises. <laughs> Quote: If your dick is six inches and under. Kill them all. Wow. Oh. Kill them all. <laughs> so she watched uh, Genocide of Small Penises. She has big old titties, but I will say, she looks like a dude named Tyrone wearing a half hair. No, no, it's a nice rack, though. No, her titties are fantastic. This is why she's cocky enough to lay this shit out there. Um, but this is her complaining about guys with small dicks. It's a minute-long clip. <laughs> State, I swear I will send my army out and kill all the niggas with a small dick. If your dick is six inches under, kill them all. You oh, pause. I realize that, too. In defense of her, her idea is going to be a little skewed. That sounds like an islandy accent. All right. And if you have less than a six-inch dick as a black guy on an island, you should kill yourself. <laughs> In fact, the easiest way to kill yourself is hang yourself from a tree by other black guys' dicks. <laughs> I don't know if you make a noose out of those other dicks, but then you do that, and then you jump off a thing. My rules, if you got a small dick, you cannot be in my country. You Rihanna? need to be somewhere and, and spend with the white people in shape. But in now, the pause United there. She, I don't know how much we take everything from here on out seriously, yeah. because she says move to Spain with all the white people and shit, right. which I'm pretty sure... She's off her job. And don't look, you know, don't don't hold me to the coals for this one. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's, they don't consider it white people living in Spain. Yeah, well, it's white. It's European. It's not. They don't, I don't know if Spanish people consider themselves Hispanic like South America. Like I think like Mexican guy. Mexican people think Spanish people are kind of whitish. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I'm not 100 percent sure. Never been. I mean, if th these titties were telling you that. At some point, you'd be like, sure, sure, sure. The white <laughs> mm -hmm. But everything I've always, all my fears about my own dick size and all my insecurities, this woman seems to be confirming those. <laughs> she says I should kill myself, Christine. You should not kill yourself. She says six inches and under. She's an idiot. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. You could watch her feel better? No, she's an idiot. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Play more of the video. <laughs> You need to have a big day. And if your dick is small and I was the president, I will kill you. Just like in the ancient time when... By the way, that what, by the way, a lot of people don't know this, that was the actual policy of Winnie Mandela. What? <laughs> <laughs> if your dick is under six inches, you get killed. That's fucking eugenics right there. I mean, that was... Hitler's plan was to kill everybody with an over six inch dick. <laughs> he doesn't want anything like that around. Yeah, this, don't think this girl's Hitler. She wants to kill everybody with dicks. She's like Hello. reverse Hitler. Yeah, she's reverse Hitler. <laughs> is your dick... I don't think your dick's under six inches. Bizarro Hitler, huh? I don't think your dick's under six inches. I mean, I think if I give it all I got, and I mean a real good behind-the-back ball tug... Mm. Really, and a good uh, split finger on either side of it, pushing back the gun, <laughs> and a little cheat forward, i probably hit six inches. You'll survive the culling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do a rubber band around the base. I do a rubber band, a rubber band around the balls. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me I while really, I whip this out. I really, 
I have you really j- jam the tape measure like, just deep into the crevice of the base of my pick as far as you can. And I mean really until I go, ow, 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 ow. This is starting at the tank, Chad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I think I'm six on the dot. Go ahead, play. Let's hear what the rest of this Baby bitch says. <laughs> <laughs> I would just make them kill all the niggas with a small dick. Because y'all annoying. Like, I, you know you know how sad it is every day to wake up as a man to have a small dick? You start thinking about... Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> what did I do to deserve this? Yep. You what can't even focus because your dick is small. What did I do? Who did I like let how down? I'm going to get a female when I pull my pants down. What I'm going to tell them. Who did I hurt? What Especially am I going to say? with the baby penis. Oh, uh, what am I going to say when I pull this out? She's so down. right. What am I going to say? Ooh, child, things are going to get easier. Oh, my God. Ooh, child, I, I've, I've said it, in my life, like, with my dick, how many times like told you? See, I was saying, like, were you hoping that I was that I was going to be like, oh, it's just jokes, baby? <laughs> yeah, she bummed me out. Good, thanks, Lou. <laughs> oh, trying to make you feel better. I know, man. White Lou and Jacob, Chris, you know, guys like us, yeah. just you know. <laughs> I mean, we hear what this girl's saying, but, you know, we have to rise up, right? It's the people she's trying to kill, right? All, all four of us, right? Make them feel better. All four of us. All four of us just sitting here with our average dicks, right? I mean, whatever. Who cares, right? We'll start our own club. Don't Maybe we want girls with huge pussies killed. How about that, huh? Make our own video, right, Jay? Yeah. Let's fucking reply. She doesn't deserve a big cock. I'll wear the same dress if it's going to get the attention we need, if it's going to get enough eyes on it. <laughs> Oh shit, that one hurt. I have a yeah. Let's take our second break. This uh, show is moving by so fast today. Uh, we have to take our second break here. Yeah, we got to get in before seven o'clock, buddy. It's the advertisers start getting testy. Um, we're hanging out with Chris Stanley. We'll come back and watch the other video. Uh, let you know, black women have had it up to here. It's the bonfire. Damn, damn, damn. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Yeah, why not listen to the whole thing? It's a short one, everyone. It's the bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Big J Okerson, Dan Soder, gallivanting off. From what I understand, filming his first ever orgy scene today. Oh, shit. That's pretty cool. For billions. Big surprise, surprise. Orgy. That's how they solve all their problems. Axe Capital invites whatever Paul Giamatti's thing is, and then they come in there and they have a big orgy. Oh All dudes. Gosh. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Uh, if you want to see Dan Soder for your own orgy, you can meet him at the Albany Funny Bone, Thursday, December 28th through Saturday, December 30th. Get tickets for that in all of Dan's shows at dansoder.com. And, of course, Chris Stanley hanging out with us. Yeah. You can hear Chris Stanley on Bennington weekdays, noon to 3 on Sirius XM Raw Dog 99. You can also listen to his podcast, High Society Radio, at gasdigitalnetwork.com. Also, uh, the new Bennington Show shirts are available now at benningtonshow.com. Get an almost Bennington shirt for yourself, everyone. Which, by the way, I saw Bennington shirts coming out. In, I was in Indianapolis this week. Yeah. A lot of Bennington fans coming out with, with Bennington shirts on. That's awesome. Yeah. Pretty great. Pretty fucking great. Blue Jean Baby. Um, and follow us always at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, do you have that other video up, Christine? We were watching black women who have just had it up to here. I don't know. We can top the woman who wants to exterminate, purge men. Well, she's ready to purge small dick men. <laughs> Which, by the way, does make for an even fight. If you're not lumbering around all that fat dick, you could probably run quick. So you're great prey. I mean, it's good sport prey. Good yeah, sport yeah. prey. You want to give them a chance to at least get away. They're hungry for life. Oh, yeah. I can climb a tree with this dick. <laughs> yeah, nothing's holding me down to the earth. Gravity's not hitting me the same way it's hitting you, you big monster cock asshole. Fucking aerodynamic. <laughs> yeah. I'm like a swimmer. I swim through the air with this... <laughs> There's no wind. There's no wind flap hanging between my pants. This is a woman who says she's done with men that have potential. Um, she's saying that dudes who are... It's coming, baby. Don't worry. The band's going to make it or whatever. Oh. She's had enough, and she's sitting in... You know, her car's got leather and tear, it appears. I don't say. I don't know if it's vinyl. I'm not going to judge her if it is. It looks but. like she's got a sunroof. It looks like she's making money for herself. She's got a sick, sick moonroof. That might be a. That might be a Tesla, very possibly. Yeah. Ooh. I didn't know part, Tesla's had giant roofs like that. Whatever it is, she has enormous, amazing titties. Yeah, she's got great uh, breasts. And 
both of these women seem to be kind of cut from the same cloth. Okay. In that, and Black Lou, I'd like your opinion on this because uh, you're our uh, black guy who's had it up to here with black women uh, voice on the show. Yeah. Yes. When you see this woman, tell me if you agree with what I'm seeing here. Is beautiful woman, obviously beautiful, amazing body, but I could tell almost from the 24-7 stank face this girl must have on that everything's like an affront to her. Every conversation you have, like, what are you saying? I can't do it. It just seems like a woman who's ready to battle with you all the time about her femininity, yet um, she constantly almost has her nipple hanging out of her shirt. <laughs> Sexy. Yep. She's defensive while attacking you at the same time. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So, uh, she wants you to know if you're over 30 years old with just potential, <laughs> leave her alone. Her name is Daphne Springs. Uh, it's posted in the video here, and this is her. Buckle up, Black Lou. I'm sorry this has to happen to you. You've already made your hey, choice, what's though. Up? <laughs> uh, this is Daphne Springs with a public service announcement. If you're over 30, have your shit together before you step to me. I'm done with men with potential. You know, I'll pause Don't it for a second. It. I'm just going to say out of the gates here. I, I bet she's first generation giving a shit about something like this. Her parents named her Daphne. So something tells me that household wasn't done with a fine-ass, successful brother. <laughs> Why the eek part? Daphne sounds uh, fine. Yeah. No one's name was... You didn't hear of uh, the, the lost daughter Daphne uh, Huxtable from the Cosby Show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Daphne Banks. Uh, Carlton Banks' sister. No. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm a black woman, so I can turn potential mm. into greatness. Kind of like what Michelle did for Barack. But pause I don't it, have time. Pause it. Give me four more examples. <laughs> Jada for Will. That's yeah, all right. Fair. Yeah, but he wasn't potential. He 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 came to her already showing up. <laughs> he was already the Fresh Prince. He was already the Fresh Prince. That's not potential. You think that's potential? You got some fucking no, high standards. What she just said right there, I have a feeling like contradicts the rest of it. Is she's like, I could make a man great, but I don't want it. I want you to be great first. <laughs> like that's it's right. a ridiculous thing. Well, maybe this goes somewhere haywire. I want you to hit me. Put me in my place, motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Daphne. That's you said you it. I'll do Daphne? it. All right, Would you prefer a backhand or a, 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 a close palm? <laughs> I'm done at the building nigga workshop. You're a man with potential? Find you a woman with potential. Y'all have a potential-ass baby. Y'all live in a potential-ass house inside of a potential-ass neighborhood. Leave me alone. I don't want a man with potential. I want a man that's already successful because I'm successful. That's what I deserve. That's what I want. That's what I need. I need you to stop fucking me up with your potential. Pause it. I can already tell. A side motherfucker, or she was somebody's mm -hmm. side uh, girl. All right. But the dude said, like, you're going to be, no, oh, baby, it's coming. I'm going to get a divorce. No, you understand. When I become a famous rapper, then I'm going to move out. I'm going to get my shit right. And you're going to see. <laughs> and she's like, I'm going to make a video. <laughs> I'm going to world star. I want to show you her Instagram profile, but do you want to finish the video first? What should we see first? Let's finish the video. Okay. Now I'm putting miles on my goddamn car, messing up my brakes. You know how much that shit costs for a Range Rover? Because I'm fucking with She's your potential. Fucking ass, Range Rover? I'm not knocking potential, but you should have potential in your teens and your 20s. So by the time you're 30, that potential is now success. And by the time you're 50, that success should be greatness. And if you're 60, still with potential. Die. It's over, nigga. <laughs> what? Die again? That rap career ain't never gonna happen. I you mean, ain't never... At 60, yeah. the, she's right. She's got a point. The rap career's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, you <60. she? laughs> My flow's still nice. Maybe True. management? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't understand. I was a rapper. <laughs> My name is Gerald. I'm here to say, <laughs> Gerald Easy. Give me a dope beat. Oh. Lay it down, G. Yeah. Oh, that's the guy that did an MTV audition tape at 38 years old. What? <laughs> the, it just made me think of the MTV audition at 38 years old. Oh, that I did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't know why I didn't that. stop that from happening. Me and Louis, me and Louis J. Gomez auditioning for like some, they were doing some new, what like. was it? <laughs> Jacket was it stuff. TRL? I think it went nowhere. It went nowhere, and it was definitely a show geared at like thirteen year olds. Well, like Ben Demarco and what you call it, God, and they should have. Yes, they're, they're like, exactly they're who like should have come. Young... Yeah, I'd rather see you two guys talking to thirteen year olds trying to appeal to them. It was hysterical. <laughs> Dude, here, but, but we did things that I did never. At thirty eight, you're supposed to just go. It's like, yeah, I'm just not going to do this. 
<laughs> but Lewis was so excited. It was like, you have to, it's like challenging each other with these different, it's like friends challenging each other. Oh, God. But they gave you a list of things to pick from. Okay. And it was like, you basically have to play a game, like a, like a simple like rock, paper, scissor right. or odds, evens game. Sure. And whoever loses has to do the thing while the, the other task. person busts their balls or whatever. Yeah. And it was things like, you know, do sit-ups like... I don't know, like, or, you know, do push-ups over something where your face would go in or something okay. like that. Or survive, like, a tickling something. Or whatever. It was all sounds this, awesome. It was all this weird shit. But one of them was eat a blended turkey sandwich. A blended turkey? Like, oh, because you put a turkey sandwich into a blender. Yeah, but, so we went to the deli and got a turkey sandwich. So it was like a turkey sandwich, like, onions, lettuce. Yeah. Whatever. The works. We got a good turkey sandwich. Yeah. And blended it. And that was the one I lost. And at 38 years old, if you're not on Jackass currently, <laughs> if you haven't paid couple, for that, to try to get an audition for a show. By the way, me and Lewis also, it's funny, I, I did it earlier on the show, we kept doing, uh, by, after a while we made it our joke, but we're just so old for this that we kept doing the old MTV riff. We kept going, man, 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 And all the producers like, what's that? Why do you keep doing that? And like, oh, I can't wait to get my Moon Man awards for this one. <laughs> moon person. Oh yeah, the Moon person. Um. It's one person now? It's yeah, moon. yeah. It's non Just so you know. Good. Just Fluid. so you know, there's a dick and pussy in that costume <laughs> under there. Now, for the sake of, for the sake of the pressure when you're, uh, spacewalking as they often will. Yeah. You have to plug your dick into your own pussy. So it's like putting a. Oh my god. It's like putting away like a diesel, uh, fuel pump. <laughs> you're just recycling all your own piss all the time. <laughs> yeah. You're a completely efficient system. What goes out goes back in. <laughs> it's Yo. what Doc Brown figured out at the end of. Uh, we don't need roads where we're going, and it runs off trash now. Um, it all runs off trash, and we kept doing that. But I fucking take. I took like a sip of blend. I mean, every time I think of it, I'm like, how could I have I ever eaten turkey sandwiches again? And I have. It tasted bad. It was years. It, it was. I mean, the consistency. Was, was, Seems like I would like the taste of it if it was a no, good turkey no, sandwich. No, 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 no. I feel like I would take a big <laughs> fucking gulp and love it. You don't think that's true at all? I think you? it's true. Yeah. I've never seen Lewis happier than when you lost. Listen, <laughs> uh, we had we had a, 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 a fan of the show send in a while ago. Speaking of fans of the show, I do want to give a shout. I know I. Uh, you told me today, Christine, that's uh, the Ginger Ninja's birthday. So Sagittarius, just like me, uh, two days before my birthday. Oh. Uh, happy birthday, Ginger Ninja, from the whole crew here at the bonfire. Um, Ginger Ninja will see him at the at the live event, which is sold out. Everybody, how cool is that? Um, but a, a fan sent us in a bunch of sodas that were these odd flavors. Okay. And things you enjoy in the world. I love uh, ranch dressing and hot wings. Yeah. But ranch dressing, hot wings, soda made me stand over that trash can for 25 minutes. Was I it? couldn't. It, and the taste wouldn't get out of my head and face Ooh. for days. Now that sounds like something I'd like, too. Like this turkey fucking uh, blended... Delicious drink. <laughs> oh man! Jay, what did you do? You just put a sub in a blender with water? Yeah. Oh god. All right, the water part sounds kind of fucked up. But uh, Jacob, I was thirty. Yeah, oh, I'm saying, it, it came into it, it turned into a fucking like like pink paste. This was like mm. a couple years ago. This was two weeks ago. It was whatever it I was. Mean, it was not enough. a time. It was not a time when I should have been auditioning for an MTV show. <laughs> I'm like, what All right, yo, this is my crew. This is this. Room Raiders and I'm Jay Okerson. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, there's a lot of jizz on this blanket, brah. <laughs> What's going on, dude? Like, All right, let's slide down railings to the fucking first floor. <laughs> yeah, here we are, yo, down in the foyer. <laughs> Your dad. <laughs> Every day, bro. Oh, what's up, bitches? It's me and these two twinks and this teen runaway. We're here with you talking now, live. <laughs> oh. Shit. Yeah, Jake Paul should have gotten that audition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jake Paul should have been up for that. I mean, I, yeah, it, it was really uh, upsetting. It went the way it was supposed to go. I think it was Ben and Josh or Ben and, like, Ricky Velez. It, it was all people who made sense. I, <laughs> like, just, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, sense. It, I mean, I guess the story People who wear, uh, adults who wear doll clothes. <laughs> That's what it was for. I couldn't fit into those pants. <laughs> There's no chance in hell. Um, it's every day, bro. Uh, let's hear some more of this lady laying it down. You ain't never gonna have a house. You a damn raisin in the sun. Oh, my mom. Ouch. If another man enters my life and act like
back his shit together, but I find out that he's just a man with potential, you're going to find me on the Discovery ID channel because I'm going to snap. Now, what does she do, do you think? I know. Now, I, I, I know. I don't want to say. She can afford a range I want to take guesses. I'm assuming it's fucking Instagram model shaking her titties is and ass really? or something. Is that you what she's fucking think. proud of? But instead, she's a fucking nuclear physicist. Take Whoa. a couple more she's, guesses. Motherfucker, get, do your, get a job, motherfucker. I'm in here working on nuclear fission. <laughs> I'm trying to turn corn into fuel. I'm mixing down my demo. Real, <laughs> shut up. You want to guess or you want me to just show you? Real estate. Uh, so Jacob says real estate. That's a good guess. White Lou? Show business. She's in show business. Wait, look, can see my screen. No, you can just tell. She loves the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you say? Black Lou, same thing? I was gonna Chris? Say, I was gonna she say works at a Range Rover dealership. <laughs> she's just in a Range Rover on the dealership. It's not actually just, hers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, Daquanza. What the fuck's her name? Daquanza. <laughs> <laughs> What's her? She has a crazy name. What uh, is it? Design? Was it? Daphnique. 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 Yeah. Daphnique, please. We need you to clean bin four. <laughs> God, what does she do? Uh, comic writer? Stand up comic. Uh, she featured for Martin Lawrence nice. and toured with Cat Williams. <laughs> so that's a bit. And she just turned it into an Instagram video. Oh, God. Yeah! Oh, she's coming out on this? She did the new season? Yeah, it looks like it. In the hood. If you ain't hood, you can't pull me over if you don't know Migos. What are you pulling me over for? Over for, over for, over for. Sorry, I thought that way. It said potential. I thought Ooh, it was man, just I'm her bitch. I'm a bad bitch. That's her. I love Jay older men because they do stuff for me like they make sure my oil is changed. I realize when white people find shit, they call lost and found. When black people find shit, they call it a blessing. Keep making noise. Keep making noise. Keep making noise. They really just straight up did Def Jam all over again, huh? Yep, yeah. back. <laughs> back for real. Oh, remember? Sounds like y'all motherfuckers forgot what's different about black and white people! Oh, shit! Black people got roaches! Black people got roaches! Yeah! White people got kittens! Black people got the roaches! Oh, we got kittens to feed our Dobermans! We got kittens to feed our Dobermans! Oh, big dog fights in the park! Oh, taking over the park with the barbecue! Yeah! What you gonna do about it, white mother? Oh, would you cut off short? Oh, peck a wood ass motherfucker. Oh, me, my name's Potential Earl. <laughs> oh, drop it one again. Drop it one more again. Oh, you know I'd be busting up them bitches wide open like Flat out. Flat out. Now flip bitch over, start hitting up with this shit. Flat out. Now you know black brothers don't be eating the pussy normally, but some we get down to get them pussy like slurp, slurp, I'm mm mm. Oh, that pussy stag, I go back to hitting it raw. Flat out. They don't make condoms big enough for this motherfucking dick. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, my lord. Thank you, Russell Simmons. God bless y'all. Y'all been amazing. That was an amazing set. It says her life. I mean, this must be a wrong website because her last show was listed in June of 2016. Nailed it. No, that was it. That's the last time we saw Cat Williams. <laughs> she opened for Cat Williams. He was at the Def Jam reunion. That was pretty great. Cat Williams? Yeah, he was. They came out for like, I don't know, fuck about two minutes. Did he do a set? Like some actual comedy? He did a couple of jokes, yeah. Did he talk about getting beat up by a child on the he did internet? Did not. Did not bring it up. <laughs> That's I all I that, want to hear him talk about. I hope that about. makes the next special. Man, when he gets not, when he gets choked out by that little kid, and then it's just him sitting on the floor, and he goes, "Get you little boy, you ain't got to respect." And he, <laughs> that's his comeback to it. <laughs> and then he lights a Newport 100. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy little boy, <laughs> you don't know how to treat nobody, little boy. <laughs> I'm grown. <laughs> you get beat up by a 15 year old. You got to start saying something. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. I was at the dialysis today, <laughs> so we, we all got shit going on, motherfucker. <laughs> he took it well. She's a comic, huh? Yeah. I mean, oh my God. NFL players and pegging. Well, what? That, to that makes total sense. I mean, it makes total sense that she's a comic. I you guess. got played by World Star Hip Hop. Jay. I got played out. I thought it was some. You thought it was just some B. Well, we now I have a question. Why the fuck does she have a Range Rover opening for people? <laughs> well, I mean, when you're I opening for Cat Williams and Martin Lawrence. So what? I bet her house suck. Martin Lawrence? Was it fucking 1998? <laughs> Black Knight just came out. <laughs> yeah. Martin Lawrence? Oh, today? 
That's not, it you depends think, on how nice people are to their openers. Sometimes you think those, Martin Lawrence is breaking off his fucking openers with a Range Rover money? Mm, yeah. and, unless she lives in Mar- does she live in Martin Lawrence's attic or something? Martin Lawrence, also the Def Jam uh, reunion show, did not perform. He came did. out and said oh, thank you and left. Walked the Eddie upstairs. Murphy did like Eddie Murphy yeah, on the SNL. Yeah, exactly, thing. he fucking Eddie Murphy did. That was so lame. It was weird. Eddie Murphy did that. Came out, and goes, hey everybody, uh, Saturday Night Live, right? All right, y'all. Y'all been amazing. <laughs> Lord Michael's here. Remember him? All right, cool. Later. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll be right back. Wait, you going to go to music? No music. Just come right. What? You need me to do four more minutes? I ain't got it. <laughs> yeah. This is like, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> oh, I bet Lil Duval knows her. Who's Lil Duval? Oh, don't get me into that rabbit hole. Right. <laughs> Never mind, guys. You want to watch 25 more videos? I, you I'll tell you what. Oh, I just stole a set. I just stole a okay, set when I was there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you already know who he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we've gone through it. Him, uh... That's when he took a roughie on Arsenio Hall when Arsenio Hall came back. That's one of my favorite videos ever. Not totally his fault though. He just made a uh, he made a call in the beginning where he, he threw his own timing off on Arsenio Hall. Oh yeah. Lil Duval comes out and he goes, "Oh man, give it up for Arsenio Hall." And they clap and he goes, "Arsenio Hall got the best." Uh, oh shit. While they're clapping, he goes, "Arsenio Hall's got the best intros, don't he?" But they're still they're not hearing him say that. Oh no. So he just goes, he goes, he got the best intros, don't he? So he then he starts doing an impression of it, but he goes, "Give it up." For your, he's gonna go give it up for your Gotti, and as the joke is like the impression of of him, but they uh-huh. just hear him go. He goes give it for Arsenio Hall, y'all, and then he goes, you know, the brand goes give it up, and then the crowd starts cheering again before he says yo, God. and then he just never catches the rhythm back again. It's so awkward to have That's that happen. Shame. Why do they still air it? It's always my question. Uh, <laughs> the video is removed from YouTube. Uh, uh, what is it? I'm sure, a it's on ball? Live leak or something. Oh, he scrubbed it along with all the snuff. <laughs> Lively. Lively just has a lot of snuff on it. Jet real snuff? I think real snuff, yeah. <laughs> How much do you look at? It? I just see, I, no, I'll see like, uh, if you go to Lively, you see like, uh, like, not safe for work, this dude's dead or whatever, you know. Is it weird that I judge people more if they're, af- if they're afraid to look at crazy shit online? Why like, you know. look down on people if they don't want to look at it? I just don't believe you. What, that I haven't looked at it? No, 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 no. Oh, the people in general. I'm saying the people, when someone goes, when I'm like, oh my God, have you seen the video of, like, we had the thing, the the Russian girl hanging out the window uh, with her tits out and then gets hit by the fucking pole. Oh, yeah, I saw that shit. The people are like, oh, no, I don't even want to see that. I'm like, you don't want to see that? I mean, come on. (laughs) It's like, I get it. I get it. I'm not an, an... an animal. It's cringeworthy. It's crazy. It's yeah. a, it gives you like the chills almost when you see it. But yeah. you're like, but don't you kind of have to she's see fucking it? Fucking dead. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Her and that pole. <laughs> it was a bad day for both of them. We were gonna do a fundraiser to rebuild the pole. <laughs> She had some yeah. kids, but I don't know those motherfuckers. Russian life is worth less than aluminum. She's got a hell of a body. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Is this the girl that pwned us? Yeah, yeah. She's totally, uh, she's completely gorgeous, which is why, yeah. We, she's in LA. She's probably, I mean, who knows? there's Maybe not she's a chance. An actress. There's not a chance she'll be funny. There's not a hope. I don't know. I was laughing pretty hard at that video. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? As a man who has plenty of potential. But I, mean, I think that was genuinely, I think that video, though, wasn't a character. I think that was her bitching about, I think some dude just fucked her up. You think it was Martin Lawrence? Because she doesn't say anything necessarily funny. I know, but now that you know she's a comic, I think the whole thing had an element of, like, trying to be funny. Like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think she was, like, you know, black woman laying it down in that video. I think there was probably something trying to be funny, because it seems like... It wasn't that fit. funny. I think she was trying to get that sweet uh, World Star Hip Hop traffic, is what she's yeah. trying to do. You think Martin Lawrence keeps telling her, baby girl, I have potential, you'll see? It's 100%. That's what's happening. <laughs> I ain't followed your career. Your career started in 2009, as far as I know. <laughs> Her titties are insane. Oh, yeah. I mean, they really are insane. But she's like, uh, I just, what did she write? I just got my credit score back over 700. <laughs> I'm way before fucking that. ain't ever going to happen for me. She's doing great. But yeah, so, she said a man with potential brought my score down to a 520. It's like, don't let your boyfriend put stuff on your credit. That's not a man with a potential. That's oh, just it a says fucking... Christine, who puts everything on my credit. My potential ass. <laughs> we put our furniture on my credit. <laughs> <laughs> no, the furniture was for sure. Trouble everything else is on my credit. Mm, your credit cards. <laughs> oh, Jimmy Christmas. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Jeepers. My apologies. I didn't rest my credit card. I didn't do it with my credit. <laughs> We did get it with your credit, and then paid it with my money. No, I think we're half. This shut up, shut up, I'm bowling over you. 
Oh, I was going to say it was a couple years ago when I was dating you on Potential. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, I love Potential. <laughs> We're still waiting to see the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> Any day now, the payoff's coming, toots. You'll see. Uh, Daphne Springs. I almost want to take our last break here because I want to come back and go to this Randy Travis video that I'm so excited for that Black Lou sent me. I mean, if that doesn't set anything up, Randy Travis is a country singer from the 80s, I would call him. Okay. And the video was sent to me by Black Lou. So this is very exciting. (laughs) Uh, I can't wait to see what unfolds. This is confusing. We're hanging out with Chris Stanley. Yeah. We'll be right back. It's the bonfire. Thanks, Jay. We're working on getting some bonfire merch, but hey, great news. A tattoo artist just went ahead and made his own. They're getting out there in the world, so... That's pretty cool. Makes me feel like a jack off when shirts that have nothing to do with this come back to us. But yeah, we're gonna do what we're gonna do, right? These are looking good. They look good. They're great shirts. They're fantastic shirts. But we've been in a good old merch conversation for about a good, I don't know, let's call it two years. We're getting to it though. Good. We're getting to it. Every time we think we have good shirt designs, we say 4,000 more things we think would be of good shirt design. <laughs> He's got to we'll pull take, the trigger. But we'll take one of them would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Pull the trigger on a shirt. Maybe anything. <laughs> anything at all. <laughs> um, Dan Soder, who's off right now, got just neck deep in fucking financial actor puss. Oh, that's fucking great. Uh, at the Albany Funny Bone, Thursday, December 28th through Saturday, December 30th. Get your tickets for that and all Dan shows at dansoder.com. Um, Black Lou. Sir. Help me set this up, because I got very excited when you sent this to me. I was taking oh, a shit, full disclosure, <laughs> and I saw this. I didn't even look at the video, but I mean, the screen cap <laughs> is plenty. And I will say for his age, he looks fantastic. Or this from a long time ago? It's this cut. is from 2012. It's not that long ago for how old, Ran- how old Randy Travis. Let's do some backwards math on this. Isn't he dead? No. Come on. He's going to love you forever. Forever and ever. Amen. 58. He's 58 years old. Right. So, let's see. So, there's two other His mug uh, shot is what pops up. Oh, shit. I remember that mug shot. So, so this is video from the time of that arrest. Yes. It just came out. It okay. says that he was denied uh, by the judge keeping it private. Oh, come so on, judge. Come on, man. Amen. Oh, but he's going to love you forever and ever. Amen. Nothing on this, Jacob, you lying asshole. I know your foot's tapping right now. <laughs> Even though you don't have a belt buckle on, you just got your thumb behind your belt loop. And you're just like, <laughs> Hey, everybody. Time to take off, I guess. Farewell, everyone. Farewell. Hey, I've come to bring your village water. Give me all your women. Um... Randy Travis DUI arrest video has finally been released by Texas officials, and it's apparent the singer is out of it. Now, do they say, do they ever find out what he was all whacked out on, Black Lou? They said he basically said he had medication and alcohol, so that's what made that mixture. Medication and alcohol. I mean, that's a fucking Chris Stanley party right there. (laughs) Yeah, I mean. What's he bitching about? What is he, on Oxys? Is that what he's talking about? He 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 didn't specify. (laughs) Medication. Yeah, it's a little vague. You know, I don't like this at all. His nose candy. <laughs> is that the clinical term? Is that the Latin word for a pig? <laughs> Dissimal cocaine. <laughs> he goes, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to live, motherfucker. You got these stupid cuffs on me. I think he turns right back to hillbilly as soon as he gets arrested. Oh, hell yeah. Definitely, right? Like everything just comes out of him. Is the cop black? No. Oh, oh, that would have been great. Maybe. It says the video is over three hours long. This is just a portion of it. Three hours just with his dick out naked. They never dressed him. They're going to keep him in the back of a squad car naked. That sucks. For three hours. I feel like but also Randy Travis, though, he's one of those old school like country showmen where he all his outfits are like the fucking three amigos oh, kind sure. of thing. It's like <laughs> a lot of embroidering and stuff. So it's like, <laughs> sir, I can't. I don't understand the buckles to get you into these goddamn high-waisted pants. What are you, a fucking matador? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Al Matador to you, fucking bucko. <laughs> Charlie, what are you, some kind of Jew? <laughs> so this is, we have the clips here, and uh, yeah, it was three hours long. Jesus Christ. Uh, the 2012 footage of Randy's arrest was released Monday after a federal judge denied the country singer's request to keep it private. Uh, he filed a lawsuit in September to keep his arrest bid under wraps. Wow, because it was, what was like the statute? Is there a time limit where eventually that stuff becomes public? No, I don't know. 
I think he was just in a fight probably for the last few years trying to keep it private. Yeah, probably try to uh, keep it sealed, keep yeah. the case sealed. I mean, uh, I get that. This was a very, probably a very embarrassing night. It's pretty bad. He crashed his Trans Am. What a jerk off. <laughs> Old school. In 2012? <laughs> oh, my God. That would make more sense if it was 1912. <laughs> a Trans Am. Was, I'm taking off my T-tops, you pig fuck. <laughs> well, put my T-tops back on if you're going to arrest me, motherfucker. <laughs> um, his crash Trans Am was found... Uh, he crashed his Trans Am and was found naked at the crash scene after walking to a convenience store oh, in the nude. No. Y'all have any Magnum condoms in here? <laughs> Do one of you dinks know where I can find a condom to fit this big hog? Look at you. What are you calling a cop for? Aren't you jealous of a white man with a big dick? Who are you fucking right now? <laughs> Yeah, why, why did he come? I need condoms and a Slurpee. This is just a convenience store, man. We don't have Slurpee. This isn't a 7-Eleven. Get me a Slurpee or something comparable. Slurpee adjacent. Um, is it, now, the video you have here, this is uh, this is the winner. Right here, Black Lou, right? Yeah, the top one. Yes, sir. What happened in the crash? I don't know. I don't give a rat's ass. My wife-to-be... Has this um, argumentative way, so you know. I grew up in a manner, I, I grew up in a place where my dad was such a man. This sounds like the intro to a song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my daddy growing up. He used to be able to put his hands on a woman who said some shit like that to him. But I guess the laws are different now. That's why I call this one wife beer. <laughs> this one's going out to you, Darlene. Wife to beat her. It's called, if you say dinner's ready in ten minutes, bring it in ten minutes. Know what I mean? Otherwise a trans <laughs> Yeah. Or I will drive a classic vehicle into <laughs> our fucking front yard. I got a firebird in the goddamn garage. I still get the vibe off him that he's still country western the whole way. He's not going to curse at all. So he'll be like a gentleman, right? The like whole time. He's yeah, whacked. He's, my wife can be a real... I just say, oh boy. Cheese and... What do the other people say? So folksy. <laughs> What do people say for Jesus Christ? The cheese and crackers. crackers. The cheese and rice. No. Cheese oh, no. and rice. I mean, she is violent. She's found out she's having sex with one of those, I don't know what you say now, colors. <laughs> um, go ahead and play a little. Stop an Angus from breaking out of a goddamn herd of cows. So I ran after him. He stops me. His and lips so look very cokish. Yeah, he's gacked up. What's it, I, I, I'm not fully understanding what he's saying he did. He, uh, he's telling a story. Is a story about a herd of cows? When he was a kid. Oh, his father. Yeah, he's talking about his dad now. Okay. Because he was talking about his wife, how, you know, she's a pain in the ass, but his dad was a It was a worse man. pain in the ass. Yeah, and so when he was a kid, he had to go chase down this Angus. Okay. <laughs> Cow. Black Angus, buddy. I yeah, know. exactly. We've all been to Wendy's. It's delicious. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, he's going to tell you what his dad did to him now. Ooh. Uh, saucy. And I said, what the hell do I do, walk? That's what I grew up in. So you think that you, you've got, you've got damn got the right to do me this way, motherfucker. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, oh, he gets talking about his daddy and it goes haywire. Yeah. The motherfuckers start flying now. That piece of shit old man. What do you do to your Randy? Every time I look at my wife to me, I see his face and I just get to fucking scratching and patting, <laughs> drinking and feeling. Scre yeah. <laughs> Screaming, daddy, no, she's confused. I say, get the Angus. She goes, we don't have an Angus. <laughs> I'm gonna love you. Go ahead. What did I do to you? You put these goddamn handcuffs on me. If you'd have told me get in this car and you wouldn't have put these goddamn handcuffs on me, no, I'd have prayed for you to have help for this. But you know something? I've seen miracles happen through prayer. I'll pray for you to have the biggest growth on your head that will what? make you so goddamn. Watch this, motherfucker. 
Watch this. <laughs> Uh, okay. Is he current? Was he? Was he? Was he like sit back and watch? I'm gonna pray right now, and you're gonna grow something on your head. You're gonna get yes. brain cancer. Does he? Uh, I wonder if when the cop just sat there, not getting a lump on his head, I wonder if that shook Randy Travis's foundation of religious belief. He's like, wait, hang on, my, maybe my God radar is on the fritz. Hang on, God, it's me, RT. Where are you at? You listed. You listening, you son of a bitch? <laughs> I'm talking. I'm telling the anger story. Give this motherfucker cancer. He put cuffs on me. Give him a Does he have cuffs behind his back and his yeah, dork is hanging out? Completely naked in the car right now. Play, play, Definitely like, naked. Yeah, he's, he's naked. Comment on it. Riding shotgun for some reason, and I think he's cuffed with his hands in front of him. From the look of it, oh my god, I could be wrong. He goes, also, before you say anything, motherfucker, I'm a grower, not a shower. And this isn't really a show time, if you know what I mean. Don't you fucking look at it. <laughs> you probably won't. Don't you do it. You probably won't have kissed it, sissy nanny. <laughs> I didn't fully realize what Randy, like Randy Travis's thing is that he quit drinking in his 20s and started following Christ. And he's like a devout Christian with gospel albums. Christ, I thought he was just a country Christ, singer. Christ was in the wine, though. <laughs> uh, well, he is a country singer. What do you mean? I didn't know he was like Christian oriented. Oh, all country music's Christian oriented. Every single bit of it. Yeah. There's not one country singer who's also like, oh, and fuck God, everyone. Hey, you guys ready? Hey, I'm not real big on patriotism. You guys ready to rock and roll? <laughs> Sing yeah. about God more. All right, guys. Uh, blessed be to Allah. And uh, real quick. <laughs> Boo. Boo. Now, hang on. Give it a second. The songs are the same, just so my beliefs are a little different. Boo. Oh, yeah. Come on, everybody. Oh, Let's oh, gather oh, around. Jesus, you want to about Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He's going to put on a loincloth. So yeah. If I perform like Jesus, you might feel better. <laughs> no. <laughs> you insult me. You goddamn insulted me. You insulted me by yeah, locking the, me the up night, in a goddamn... With the night vision on this, he looks like the fucking Terminator. <laughs> it looks like his one eye is the robot eye, doesn't it? The fucking night vision's like taking away all the wrinkles. I mean, he looks a lot younger than he actually is. He looks like Max Headroom. It's a great look for him. <laughs> you should shoot a fucking music video just in night vision. I know you're angry because you're sitting next to a man with a fat hog. I know it's fatter than it is long, but you're impressed. I'm Don't act like you're not impressed. It's a fucking chode, man. <laughs> Some girls like it. Some girls want to get fucked with more barrel than dip. You know what I'm saying? I bet you do. <laughs> I bet you do, you butthole monkey. <laughs> Pull this goddamn car over. Suck it. <laughs> Come on, we got a few more miles. Put a hand on it, you little fruit. You just did a fucking 180 on me, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, I didn't look in your eyes for you. You look like console. Get this evil out of me before I end up in the kink. <laughs> <coughs> Cage basically with handcuffs behind me with my dick hanging out. Now, and I'm proud of my dick, it's bigger oh, than most, but you insulted me. You're a dead man. Now, wow. His dick is bigger than most. He did start talking about his dick, though. That's great. Spot on. Now, granted, my dick is bigger than most, but still, that's great. They get back in the car? I saw a longer version of this. Oh, no, no, it's right after this. You'll, it'll just cut right back. Please stop for gas? I was going to say, he goes, you mind if I go in and get some Malamars? <laughs> Hungry. <laughs> Been drinking all day. I haven't eaten. It's probably a lot in the situation right now. <laughs> Trying to soak up a little of this. I took you. You want to wake up tomorrow with a... <laughs> I'm fucking wrecked, man. So <laughs> I got 60 rounds coming at you. What? Mm -hmm. I got 60 rounds for the automatic coming at you. Is he starting to shoot him? Yeah. Like this. Oh, that's what's coming, man. You yeah. fuck with me, you fuck with the wrong person, I'm telling you. Man, pause it. There. You fuck with the brawn, big dick country singer, man. Can you imagine having to tell the person, as you're crouched on the floor, right, underneath the, the windowsill with your family, and bullets are just raining through your windows and coming through the walls, and she goes, who is doing this to us? And he looks over and goes, he goes, babe, 
This might be Randy Travis. <laughs> I seem to remember five years ago, he threatened to unload 60 rounds into me. I guess he found me. <laughs> they shouldn't have released that video. I think that's how he remembered. <laughs> he, holds, he holds up a white flag and he goes, all right, Randy, that's 60, man. Come on. Two of the kids are still breathing, Randy. Come on, Come on. man. Let me take him to the hospital. God I made it. a promise in front of the Lord who let me down one too many times. I have wished cancer on several. Uh, I'm so far 0 and 13 as far as my cancer giving powers. He's got to take it into his own hands. Okay, <laughs> I will bury you under a barn. Oh, shit. Ain't nobody can do anything about it. He's, he's talking very clear and like uh he's very articulate for the nonsense he's saying. He's saying it very articulate, and he's also but he's also got like his face. And we'll put it up at the bonfire SXM. His face is like both of his eyes are closed. One looks like it's been punched closed. Yeah. The other ones, but he's got them both closed, and it looks like he's just like you know talking when you're like to a friend who's like it's like hey man you fall asleep like no no i'm gonna watch the show with now i'm I'm listening to everything you're saying man (laughs) yeah yeah i'm just resting my eyes dude can't rest my eyes i'm a fucking adult 60 fucking rounds into your fucking face (laughs) yeah wow hey chris wake up what what are you saying (laughs) 60 do you have some hidden problems with me (laughs) uh Corey and callie says randy travis had a stroke in 2013 uh thanks for the uh, call Corey. so that's the right side then right it's the Uh, right side that's the right Wait, but that's not in the same eye that he got his. But he got busted open. Look at that! Oh, wow. He goes, "This is going to be drooping in a year anyway." Here you go. Look, hit me in my stroke eye. <laughs> if you're going anyway, hang on, officer. If you're going to hit me, hit me in the stroke eye. <laughs> Don't hurt the good eye. Um, let's let's finish up. Back up, back up a couple of seconds. There you go. I don't want to say anything Randy says. Ain't nobody can do anything about it. All you gotta do is take these goddamn cuffs off me. Mr. Travis, I know you're upset. You're goddamn right I'm upset, but there's no reason for you to even talk to You're a dead man. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it there. You're a dead man. And, and he really didn't get in a lot of trouble for that, huh? Cop was pretty cool about. It. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it would be the cop not to like press like you know threatening an officer of the law. I mean, really threatening his life. Like gonna kill him. He threatened to kill him about three times in that video. And the dick <laughs> talk probably just to make him feel good about himself. Man, I'm gonna fuck your kids in front of you. I wouldn't and, play it. Is that what you want? The other there's another video. I wouldn't play it because the audio is bad. But uh-huh. he's in the car. The cop isn't in there, and he is giving. Such a prayer to God. He's really talking to Jesus. He's he's doing a prayer all by himself, and then you realize he's praying to God to to put a bullet in the cops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he ends this. with, "Please blow his brains out" or something like that. Did you have a friend of the mafia named God? <laughs> <laughs> like all those things, he he's, he only used God to wish for terrible things in this whole <laughs> cancer and death. He goes, ah, "I'm gonna give you cancer right now. Give me a second here. Let me get into my cancer giving zone." And <laughs> <laughs> I shit on your, I shit on, your, I, shit I shit in your cruiser. Shit All right, myself. there you go. If you'd let me put pants back on, we wouldn't be in this situation. But you want to look at my big fat dick, and here we find ourselves. You got a car full of shit. I, I see you licking your lips. <laughs> I know you want it pretty gorgeous. Um, so he's praying that the guy gets shot. Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's right out of the Bible, and then but he's then he's asking, please put a bullet in this guy. Yeah, I refer crazy. you to Ezekiel two twenty three. Letter to the mm-hmm. Corinthians said <laughs> John three sixteen. Uh, it says I want to fucking shoot you inside the head to your death. Yeah, hang on, I gotta look up. I gotta look up murder in the index. Okay, all right. No, no machine guns in here. I must have an abridged version. Hold up. Wait a second. Is this right? Is this King James Bible? <laughs> I can't find nothing about it in here. Wow, what a doofus. I mean, really. What a more. Maybe but they all, dude, celebrity, with all the camera stuff now, these celebrities never, when you get hammered, I guess, I don't know. Again, it's not, alcohol just doesn't affect me that way. Or maybe I just haven't done enough of it often enough to have those experiences to know. I couldn't, the drunkest I could be, I couldn't see telling a cop. I'd be asleep. 
before I would tell a cop, like, I'll shoot you in the face, motherfucker. I could see it sounding slurringly and drunkenly asking to, like, I was like please don't do that. You know, I was like, oh, please, man, don't. Yeah, you know, but, like, you're not, like, but the idea one. of being like, dude, if this weren't these cuffs, I'd bite your fucking <laughs> cheek off, cocksucker. <laughs> it's so confident. And Southern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, why is this guy talking so it's my drunk voice. It's the Fuck way up. I want it's the way I want to sound all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Tough titty motherfucker. The booze and the pills allow me to be the way I want to. But uh what's her name? Remember when uh that was so damning, I'm surprised it didn't cause her any problems. Um uh, Reese Witherspoon. Remember when she they called no. her drunk driving and she's like, Do you know who the fuck I am? Oh, she, yeah, she yeah, did yeah, that, that She did like a she did a whole, like, you know who I am. They showed a big time. We showed McNabb, uh, getting a DUI and like, what McNabb I don't do? know what to do. DUI. What, 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 like, what do you do when he got busted? Oh, anything? Why is the video so funny? Yeah. Oh, to me, the, the winner of that video is always the guy that asked him four questions in a row that he answers immediately, except the one he didn't have an answer for yet. And he does this. He has one of those. He's like, what are we doing? He's like, oh man, you know, hanging out with friends, man. You know? <laughs> He's like, where at? He goes, oh man, over in, uh, town. He's hanging out at a place over there in town. Yeah. And I'm like, what place are we hanging out? He goes, what? <laughs> it's just for some reason to me, that's where it all falls apart. He goes, what place, like, was I in? Or was it near? Like, like you want to know, like, the place, you, mean, you mean the place, like the, the neighborhood? <laughs> no, no, the place, the address. What, oh, this is all celebrities flipping out? Oh, yeah, but I mean, these are all so, but I mean, it's even more like drunk. Yeah, the Reese Witherspoon one. Do you want to play this? Oh, you got it? Yeah, mm -hmm. when she says that. It's it's what do I have to tell you today? I'd like to know what's going on. He's under arrest. If you don't get back I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm allowed to stand on American ground. Yeah, I'm allowed to stand on American ground. I mean, who thinks that's the case? First of all, to argue these, this is, this is my this. thing. And we have, uh, yeah, I think we have Dave Smith coming in tomorrow, right? But I like talking myself, I guess, with Dave. It's not even that she's wrong in what she's saying. It's just like, you can't win in that situation. If they've already haven't given you the, oh, you're Reese Witherspoon, if you don't get that out of the gates. Yeah. And, you know, and I get it. You want to give a little edging to be like, hey, oh, man. He goes, I'm sorry. Man, I haven't pulled over since I was filming Four Christmases. You know, like, <laughs> you give him some kind of like, and once they go like, oh, you're an actress, man, big deal. And they keep going on. Like, if you think at that point, you go and like, my rights as an American is to stand if I want to stand. You're like, that's that always works with the cops, right? Yeah. yeah I, every, every, every interaction I've had with the police. Yeah, they're really cool with you telling them where you can go. Yeah, the, they love it. The interactions I've had with the cops though, are so bizarrely different from the ones that you've had. And like white girl cop privilege must be a real thing because it's just a boldness and an, like untouchable. Like you're almost like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna hit me? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, what were you doing tonight? It's like smoking crack. Why do you think this car's upside down? <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm that bad of a driver? Not on crack, you idiot. Burning hot. What, I is gotta, the, what is the fucking criteria to become a cop now, you boob? <laughs> anyway, I'll take a ride back to my father's, please. And also be cool about it. Don't tell him. That's exactly <laughs> what I know it's exactly what happened. I'm with you. I know your story. That's crazy. It makes me furious every time a cop came to me. The first time when Nokia phones came out, and I didn't have a Nokia phone, but so many of my friends did, so they, yeah. I just had a charger in my car. Yeah. Always. And a cop pulled me over for, like, you know... You were doing 30 in this 25. Really was like a nervous, not a nervous driver, but a very like, I don't want to get pulled over yeah. constantly. And a cop, he saw that Nokia phone charger. He goes, is that a, he thought I, he, I, like I burned him. He thought it was a radar detector charger. Oh shit. And I was like, oh, and I just go, oh no, I don't have a radar detector. He goes, yeah, cause I'm going to check your car. Do you have one? I go, no, I don't have one. But I mean, you can check whatever you want to check. And he just opened up all my shit and like threw everything out of my glove compartment. What? Like he just left it all there and was like, all right, carry on. I mean, I had to put it all back myself. Like all these weird, mean interactions. Yeah, well. They're also trying to big dog you. So it's a different thing. Like they want to show power that's over you. That's what cops you. do. What do they want to do to you? Fuck just get me. you home safe. <laughs> Whoa, wow. Well, right. They know they right, have power over me. I'm a chick. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess all the cops are dying to fuck Christy now. Sorry. I didn't realize, Prince. I didn't realize you were the bell of the policeman's ball. Jeez Louise. Someone got fucking cocky when they got bangs. She goes, yeah, she goes, pull over. officer, I realized I was doing 80 to 20, but here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you want to fuck me, so what is it going to take? You want to see a little nip? 
<laughs> you want me to give you, you? You want me to give you just a little bit of helmet? I'll just give you a little <laughs> helmet with my right hand. No one's looking. No one's here. Just put, open it up. <laughs> open it up and just put it in the window a little bit. There you go. I'll kiss it. <laughs> oh, Ooh, it's crying a little bit. I like that. That's the weeper. I'll touch it on my lips. <laughs> Oh, well, it's st- oh, it's sticking to me. Oh, that's all you right there, baby boy. And you swirl it around. Mm. You blow it back at his pee hole. <laughs> Anywho, thank you. No. This has been a lovely interaction. No. <laughs> never offered sex, but never got in trouble. And I should have been in major trouble a lot. Your eyes were offering sex. <laughs> I'm going to offer sex. <laughs> See if that gets me out of anything ever. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll blow you. Is that, is that thing that can happen yeah. right now? You want some bud sex? Look, dude, I'm not, I'm not gay, and I'm, sh- I'm sure I'd be fine at it, but yeah. I mean, like, if you, if it'll get me out of this, I will suck your dick. I re- I have a flight tomorrow morning. Like, just, just take it out. Just... You're going to get me in so much more trouble than just a stupid, you know, unpaid seatbelt ticket. Look, it's just skin on mouth. What's the big deal? Yeah. Right? It's like licking an arm, but saltier. <laughs> so much saltier. <laughs> More um, violent. <laughs> yeah, they don't give a shit. Oh, my God. This time went so fast. Chris Stanley, thank you so much for hanging with me today. Well, thanks for having please, me on again. Please come do it again soon. Um, aw. And then you feel like home. Look at that. Aw, that's sweet. Or we stole it. Either way you look at it. Uh, Dan Soder not going to be in tomorrow, I don't think. Uh, if he can make it, I know he will. But he's off filming billions. I think we're going to have Dave Smith in tomorrow from the Legion of Skanks. Uh, on behalf of the whole crew, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Crackle, crackle.